Hello everyone and welcome back to another Getting Stuff Painted, my bi-weekly update, give or take on the miniatures I've been painting for the games we cover here on the channel. And also once again reminding you that this winter I am encouraging you to get through your pile of grey shame and also remove dog hairs. Get your miniatures painted, assembled and or painted, do a little bit of damage to your pile of grey shame and I hope these videos and the increased frequency of them coming out as we approach the end of the year help encourage you to do that. Anyway, as always, basically mostly done with contrast paint. There are some exceptions this time. And we have some miniatures from Masters of the Universe Battlegrounds, Hellboy the board game, and the new version of Kill Team, technically, although some of it is from 40k, but I'm repurposing it for Kill Team. Then a little bit of Fallout with some Warfare and Elder Scrolls Call to Arms on the end there. So we'll go from left to right, as always, with intermittent breaks for my impatient dog, who's currently sniffing my foot. That's not concerning at all. And yeah, let's get started. So to complete the characters you get in the box, the starter box that is, or just like the main box for He-Man Masters of the Universe Battlegrounds, I had two more villains to paint and two more good guys. So we have Evil Lynn, not Evelyn, Evil Lynn, and Triclops, making up the remainder of the villains for the full team of five you get in the box. And then we have Ram Man and Orko, the magician, sort of, for the good guys. So I believe both sides, five characters, their base equipment comes to almost 100 points on the dot, which is how much you play for a standard game of it. But either way, by the time you hear this, the viewer verdict will be up for everyone. Uh, we'll be seeing it at least one more time because I want to try it with the full setups um, and not just the tutorial setup. But beyond that, it will depend how it does. And at the time I'm recording this, I don't know yet. So, because only channel members have seen it. So for Evil Lynn, I used Frostheart for various points of our armor with some Basilicanum Grey, Gloom and Flesh for a flesh tone even though the official paint job has it much more like a pallid yellow, but I didn't really like that so just went with base skin tone for her with Striking Scorpion Green for her weird eyebrows and then Non Oil over the top and Agros Dunes for the base with Non Oil over it as well. Not super happy with the paint job I did on, on her but yeah, not terrible again at the, the range at which I'm aiming for. Triclops, I used the same green, Mantis Warrior Green for his green parts. I used f uh, Magma Droth Flame, which is the new orange contrast paint for the orange parts, Basilicanum Grey for the tassels and such and, and furry parts of his armour, and Non Oil and Gloom and Flesh again. Pretty simple. Uh, the official paint job has his sword being pure green, so I just did that as well. I feel like it would look better if maybe that gem was a different colour and the blade part was actually silver, but I'm copying the official paint job. And yeah, they come in purple plastic, if you aren't aware, with Mattel branding. <laughs> Didn't notice that. It doesn't even say the year, it just says Mattel and then Archon Studios. But either way, Triclops, who is a one-eyed... Triclops, I guess, although if I remember rightly, doesn't his eye like change or something? He can spin it so it's different things. I, don't, I, I mean, I watched He-Man when I was very, very young, so I don't know, and I never really got into the expanded universe or like the Netflix versions. Oh, actually, yeah, there's another eye there and there behind. Oh, you know what? I never even noticed that there was two more eyes on his helmet that he could switch to, so I haven't actually painted those, which I should probably correct to make them blue. Uh, I might do. Maybe the, only the active one lights up, who knows. But, yep, I missed something. For Orko, painted him with just his stick sticking in the base at first because I could not find this Perspex thing he sits on. But eventually I did, thankfully. So I used the Magma Drop Flame for his hat. For his cloak, I used the Burgundy contrast paint. Uh, Sig Sigurd Burgundy, I think it's called. For his staff, it's Nazdrag Yell and his skin tone is Frostheart again. Frostheart's getting a lot of work this week. And it's a, a new contrast paint and it's a good one, especially compared to some of the other blues. And then just a little bit of Black Legion for the circle on him there. So I did originally paint him a different shade of red. I didn't like how it looked, so I, I redid it with the burgundy to more closely match. Like the shades of red he is very wildly, depending on whether you're going by original cartoon, comic books, or the Netflix show where he looks very strange. Um, but this this is, and even like his scarf is different colours depending on the source material. I just tried to match it up to the official paint job with the colours I chose. And that in my memory that's how I remember him looking from the cartoon. For Ram Man, he's basically just a bunch of lead belcher silver with some... Uh, that is Blood Angels Red, I believe. Actually no, it might be Battle Red. Battle Red with non-oil over the top. It doesn't look dark enough to be Blood Angels Red. 
and his pants are Mantis Warrior green or Striking Scorpion, whichever. Yeah, Mantis Warrior. Striking Scorpion is the bright green. Mantis Warrior one is kind of the, the one I call Hulk green. Gulliman Flesh again, and then just no no. He was super quick. He has a funny name. Not the funniestly named character from the human universe. That's probably Fisto. But Ram Man is a close second in terms of hilarious name. So next, just as a matter of note, we have three more frogs from Hellboy the board game. Oh, dog, don't you dare start barking. You're very grumpy. I'm trying to talk about frogs. Well, I don't really have much to say about them, to be fair. It is just three more frogs. There is one more frog type left to do. There's technically three more of the spawn bases. I don't know if I need to do those to actually try the game or not. If anyone does know, let me know, like, am I likely to need all six or seven or eight of the frog spawn bases done? Or just are the full size frogmen enough? The difference is with these ones is they're holding, like, fish hook thingies. The colours I used are exactly the same as I've talked about, other than Lead Belcher Silver and Garagax Sewer and Lead Belcher for the, the fish hooks. But beyond that, totally, as I've been doing, <laughs> I guess I have a three frog quota every single one of these I do. So on that note, I should get the last ones done for the next getting stuff painted. And that will hopefully mean that then I can start trying to put a viewer verdict for Hellboy on the itinerary. Because that should be everything I need to be like just able to do the opening tutorial or whatever campaign. Since I think it just uses the frogs. If it needs more, I'll, I'll need to look into it. I haven't actually like studied how to play the game yet. but. That will hopefully be something we'll definitely get before the end of the year. But again, just as a matter of note, three more frogs done. So next we have Kill Team, technically, although we'll talk about this over here first. These are from the Hive... Hive Storm? Is that what it was called? The new Kill Team box that I did an unboxing of. It's Hive something, I keep blanking on the, the second part. But as part of what it gives you in that box, which is actually such a good deal, it would be stupid not to get that box, even if you don't particularly care for the Kill Teams in it, which is my case, I don't really have any particular affection for Imperial Guard or Vespids but because you get the rule book you get what these are from which is the uh, bonus equipment um, like utility equipment that you can have representations of instead of just markers that's what these are for um, you get the cards you need for deployment types and such so it, it just makes sense because otherwise you're literally paying more for less and I, I do genuinely mean literally I'm using it correctly so yeah anyway as I say these are just in place of using just the markers although in some cases I think you could just use it as set dressings as an example the smoke grenades that it comes with because this is actually wider than the marker for the smoke grenade I think smoke grenades are one inch horizontally I mean yeah I do mean horizontally infinite height vertically uh, above if you put it on a platform it doesn't go below but either way Militarm green for the smoke grenade itself. Uh, I just had the plain grey seared that I base everything in for the smoke, and then I used that new white contrast, the apothecary, no soul, soul blight something. I think it's called. I used it on uh, like Shadow King recently and a bunch of other stuff. It's good enough. I, I would say that looks like a pretty decent smoke effect, and I did them identically, so nothing much else to say about those with a little bit of Aggress Earth Shade on the silver for the grenade just to make it look used and worn. Then we've got two piles of ammo. I just quickly did these in Lead Belcher Silver. Picked out some bullets with um, a bog standard bronze paint that Citadel does. Something bronze, it's not a contrast paint. And a little bit of Militarm Green for any kind of grenades and such that are mixed into the piles. These just represent ammo dumps. Uh, they're slightly, like both of them are not the same, they are slightly different looking and hopefully in focus despite being pretty small. So yeah, that was simple enough, did them real quick. And then we have two bunches of landmines that you can just place in your deployment. I believe it's one of the optional utility equipments any faction can take. Again, Militarm Green for the mines themselves, a little bit of Black Legion for the wires which are a bit hard to see, uh, and then Basilicam Grey with a wash over the top. So simple as that. That's not all the utility equipment you get on that sprue incidentally. Uh, I've still got a bunch of stuff like every tier of barricade. There's three tiers of barricades and ladders that are deployed and then a couple of bits of sprue representing ladders that are yet to be deployed. They're all basically just done in silver so I'm just holding off to just spray paint them silver and do them all in a one -er. So I haven't done those yet but you'll probably see them next time. So then we have an entire kill team of a uh, Phobos strike team I think they're called these guys because they're in the Phobos armor. Uh, I decided to paint these up as Blood Ravens and I use a different method for them than I would normally and it's been a long time since I painted Space Marines um, but here we are. So 
if you ignore the two that are weavers, which are these two, these are just spares I had around that I never finished painting because I got the Phobos Armor Squad when they were first released for 40k. Um, or maybe it was like a little bit after, but either way I picked up that box and I only ever painted half of them as Ultramarines and I kind of drifted from 40k, or rather it pushed me out for being too expensive. So I never got around to painting the other Phobos Marines I had, so I decided to do it. And in order to kind of round out a Phobos team, you would do want some Reavers. So I picked up a sprue of just five Reavers off of eBay for like a tenner, I think, either side of a tenner. So I've painted up a couple of them, one of which is to be the Sergeant, the other one is just a bog standard Reaver. And then we have a Helix Adept, which is a Apothecary, basically. Uh, he's going to count as a Marksman just because. <laughs> and he's going to be a Mine Layer, and he's just like your generic guy in Phobos armor. But thing we're uh, and of this is just to represent the mine if you don't want to use the mine marker pretty neat so never painted blood ravens before they are from the dawn of war video games although they had a cameo in space marine one if you ever played that they weren't in space marine two but you can get their armor set i think or their color palette so i, I decided there's a lot of um arguing online about what shade of red blood raven armor is because it has to be a little bit different to blood angels and a little bit different to crimson fists and kind of somewhere in the middle so what i settled on was spray painting all of these with army painter dragon red or army painter red dragon whatever it's called they're red spray paint and what i found is it works really well as a, a working base on top of that i did a dry brushing of i believe it's called ember flame it's or something similar it is the technical paint that said they'll do it's a very bright orange specifically in their dry brush range for going on top of red so I did all that across all of them and then I used their new red wash from the washes they released when they released the second wave of contrast paints. I don't remember the name of that one so I'm going to have to flash it on screen but that's their new red wash besides Carlberg's Crimson which is, you know, that's that probably would have done as well. But that's not the one I used here and that gave the effect you can basically see here and then beyond that I just used Black Templar to pick out the, um, the straps, military arm green for any grenades and for the shoulder pads that is the other type of base paint you can use for contrast painting instead of gray sear i think it's just called wraithbone i did two coatings of that because one isn't smooth enough so i should have really been showing you close-ups of the models while blathering about all the colors and then techniques i was using here but the finished effect is effective i won't say it's great but i would say it's effective uh the the sergeants for Blood Ravens tend to have the same color as the shoulder pad with the Reaver mask. I think it looks a little silly, kind of makes it look like He-Man's skeleton, but at the same time, I'm okay with it. There's no official uh, iconography for Blood Ravens. There's a tutorial on how to paint them. I don't know, remember if that was official or not, but I do know Duncan Rhodes did it. Uh, I, I don't have a steady enough hand for that. So I looked up Blood Raven transfer sheets that you can find on eBay. I picked up a cheap one. I wish I hadn't because it's awful, it just it doesn't apply right, the, the transfers rip, it feels poor quality compared to the transfer sheets that Games Workshop do. So I tried on a couple of them, I did not like the results and just peeled them off. So right now they're just going to be iconless on their shoulder pads until I find a better solution. This is struggling to get into it. There we go, I think. So yeah, that was it. Oh, besides the base, I used the AK Concrete paint, the, our, our texture stuff that I keep on singing the praises of because it's such a fantastic base to work from. You can do so many things with it. I painted it Basilicanum Green. I dry brushed it with Ulthwin Grey and did a, actually I don't even remember if I did a wash, to be honest. Uh, I don't think I did. And then I just stuck on some, some grass for texture and it creates a nice effect. The white parts for the Helix Adept when it decides that the camera's going to focus on it, is just the base coat with that same wash I just talked about on top. So first time playing, painting Blood Ravens, liked it, liked the, the method I went. If you need to do any like touch up work after you've applied the wash and everything else on the red, like say you, you miss a bit or something, um, I did find that just using Blood Angel's contrast and then doing that same wash over the top basically looks identical to the spray paint. The spray paint is obviously a lot faster, so I'd still recommend just using that. But if you do need to do any like touch up work, that is fine. Like one of their helmets I actually had to do in that style and I, I remember which one it is. I can definitely point to it, but I bet you can't because they, they all look the same. So it works. That, I just wouldn't waste that much contrast paint as your base coat for them necessarily. 
when there's a perfectly good spray paint you could use instead. Although, again, maybe you don't want to pick up spray paint, so there's an option for you if you don't want to. Blood Angels Contrast with the new wash, the new red wash on top after the dry brushing. Do the dry brushing first because then it tones it down a little bit. That might be a controversial opinion, but I prefer doing the dry brushing before the wash rather than after. But, you know, either way, your preference may vary. It obviously dumbs, it dulls down the the edge highlighting that the dry brushing does, but I prefer that because I think it looks more natural. May not look as nice, but more natural. So either way, this is a valid kill team, as long as you don't mind the technically not one-to-one -one models to the official ones, and it means that we'll be able to try out kill team relatively soon. Still got to paint some scenery, unfortunately, but I found a good tutorial on how to do that using a mixture of spray paint and contrast paint. So um, I think I'm going to follow that. If I do and I show off, I'll obviously credit the person who um, whose tutorial I'm using. But thankfully with some of the old Ultramarines I have, Primaris Ultramarines, they can just form an Angels of Death kill team. So we actually have two kill teams covered now with the completion of this. And I've rambled about them enough. Uh, there they are. And hopefully that will help you if you want to paint your own Blood Ravens. I've, I've, I found it fun. They're a fun faction to paint. I know some of you might have been pausing to try and work out which helmet was the one I was talking about that I did twice. And you may have also noticed something that I didn't notice as I was doing them until I was almost done. I hate how accidentally most of them are looking to camera left, their right. That is purely coincidental and it annoys me. I guess there's something really important going on over here as my dog prepares to bark at something again. I'm almost done. You don't need to bark at some random person. It's okay. They're not going to steal the models. They wouldn't want them. Let's quickly talk about the last two things we have today which is one model for Fallout Wasteland Warfare and two that I'm going to complain about a lot from Elder Scrolls Call to Arms. But we can start with Mama Murphy from Fallout 4. I've had this model sitting for ages from the original starter set for the survivors, I mean settlers. I think I actually know they are survivors. I always get the two confused. But this was recently finished as in I just finished it before painting. And Mama Murphy is going to be used in my Fallout Wasteland Warfare series, but not as Mama Murphy. I have an idea in mind for her, so that's why I finally got around to doing the model. In terms of painting, I used Frostheart for her jacket, uh, the same orange I was talking about for her scarf, grey for her hat, and ro uh, rattling grime rather for her trousers, and I used the Army Painter Pink for her fantastic pink slippers. And she also just has old lady socks on. That's just the base paint with Agrax Earth shade on top. For the base, Basilicanum Grey and um, Snakebite Leather, again, with Agrax Earth shade over the top. So, Mama Murphy, super quick, super easy. I keep on thinking, like, it looks like she's trying to throw hands, but she's actually, like, about to huff drugs in her hand here, because that's kind of, like, her whole thing in Fallout 4, if you aren't aware. So, she's holding some kind, I think it's a, a jet that she wants, right? So it's probably a jet inhaler. So that's what she's got there. Not much to say about her, but these two things which came with, let me just pan the camera down a little bit there. These are two Dweemer uh, Ballista, or Ballista, is that plural for Ballista? And they came with the, the big guardian that I talked about maybe like three videos ago in this series. And I never got around to doing these. I don't remember if I mentioned in those videos why, but it's because I found the assembly of these so frustrating, I actually did give up at one point because there's no guide, so I didn't know which foot was meant to slot into which section of the horribly molded underneath of them. But they wouldn't go in right, they wouldn't stay in because there's no slot. You just like put it in and hope that the super glue holds. And then it's supposed to match up the holes on the base and there's no chance of doing that without it falling apart. So I got massively frustrated with these such that I almost was just going to chuck them in the bin. They are that bad. Um, eventually I just decided you no, know, just assemble them in any way possible. So this one looks like it's drunk and it's slightly leaning to the side. This one looks like it's actually fallen apart so I guess you could use it as like destroyed scenery but it just fell forwards and I couldn't fix it and I didn't really want to fix it. I painted them in the same way I've been doing the other Dreamer stuff. It's just Nazdrag yellow with a dry brushing of Necron Compound and then I got Earthshade over everything else with Basilicanum Grey for the base and also that same burgundy I was talking about for the... You know, I think that was meant to be a door. Actually, no, it is a rug because in the official paint job it's red with gold trim. I didn't want to have to do that, so I just did it in the burgundy. Uh, a rare instance of me not trying to match up to the official paint job. I can't overemphasize how frustrated I got with these models and I hate looking at them, but it's... 
like actually you can sort of see it there maybe if i zoom in a bit more like if there was a long bit of the the sprue that you slot in to know for sure it's the right position wouldn't have a problem but they're all equally indented there's no way to slot them in you just have to press them in with glue and then hope it's correct and because there's four of them you can't really do one at a time and know that it's correct it is maddening it was one of the worst assemblies i've done ever and it's it's just down to not being a good enough mold they, they needed like proper slotting and they needed to have assembly instructions would be nice like this leg goes here etc but they didn't and you know it's out of focus oh it's back in focus i don't care these are horrible and that is going to do it for another getting stuff painted i think i was about bang on the two weeks again so i'm sticking to my promise of making this the winter of discontent for the pile of gray shame that i and every miniature collector has you're not going to defeat it it's too powerful but you can at least do it a damage as we were saying last time so I hope this has encouraged you to get some stuff assembled and get it painted. Even those horrific monstrosities I just moaned about for five minutes, I still did them because they were in the pile of grey shame. And sure, I could have chucked them in, in the bin. I almost did. But at least I got them done. And, you know, it's, it's something to do in a cold, horrible, miserable winter. So I hope this encouraged you to look at some of the things you're doing. If you have recently moved to Blue Skies, a lot of sensible people have. I am on there. Feel free to tweet at me what you've been painting. I love seeing it, or if you're in the Discord, you can do it in there too, I don't mind. Um, if you are needing a link to the Discord, just swing by when I'm streaming, and me or a model will let you in. And next time, you will hopefully see another three frogs in a very slightly different pose. You'll see some more equipment for Kill Team. Um, you'll see some more Wasteland Warfare. I've got some more stuff I need painted up. And there is potentially going to be a Halloween episode. I have an idea for it, but I'm just I'm not sure if I have the, the means. I've, I've got an idea, let's just put it that way. There might be some more He-Man because the stuff I bought off my friend included some of the Wave 1 and Wave 3 releases, so I have some more characters I could paint up. But beyond that, there is going to be some Crisis Protocol. I've got the Black Panther that came with Neymar sitting on my paint painting table right now, so that should be done, and potentially more beyond that. Either way, thank you very much for watching. Hope this inspired you to get painting, and I'll see you in roughly two weeks for another update. Until then, ta-ta for now.